Buenos Nachos Amigos, and welcome to Record Breakers Music Podcast, where a group of friends hang out virtually uh, and share albums with each other, uh, taking turns one at a time, like a little virtual round table, like a book club for music, like I like to say every week. Uh, you get to follow along with us while we do your homework, do due diligence. Uh, but yeah, we share albums with you, share music with each other. Uh, I'm Petey Rafe, your man with no plan. Here with me is my crew, my team, my squad. We've got Brett. I'm, I'm wielding capos akimbo. Yes. We've got Drew. My feet are for reason. Yes. And we've got Patrick. I have a capo too. It's it's the international fidget device. And then it just like clips right onto my microphone. I've got, I've got like two microphones. And then when I need to play my folk music okay. or actually use a capo for something other than adjusting string height. Uh, I've, got, I've got mic clips. Okay, Mel. Uh, all right, we're talking about music. We're talking about an album. We've got an album to discuss. As we do every episode. Uh, and it's going to be provided by Patrick. Patrick, what have you brought forth to us today? Uh, so I wanted to uh, listen to some thrash metal. Uh, and we're going to listen to some Anthrax and their album Sound of White Noise. Because we haven't talked about them yet. But we've talked about other bands of this era. And I like this album. So Would I you call we'd talk this about album it. a thrash album? It is still a thrash album. It just has other elements to it. And if you say it's a grunge album because the producer was a grunge producer who, you know, made it's like saying Alice in Chains was a grunge band. They kind of were grunge adjacent, maybe, but they also were, were three times as heavy at the Sam Goody. I don't know. We'll have to talk about it. Might be more regular. Uh, but with so are we talking about pop music? Like Steppenwolf? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I know, oddly enough, I, I, I don't know that I actually know exactly what a 90s era Anthrax album sounds like from front to back myself, but let's talk about some expectations of you guys. Uh, Drew, what were your expectations coming into this album? I still I have that had like arm. I'm still in the hallway. I can't initiative order wrong. <laughs> Look, halfling rogue. I have a lot of decks. Um, I I had no idea either. Um, what era of Anthrax we were sort of getting, or what year this was even. Um, I I sort of knew uh, me some Anthrax. I I knew they were uh very thrashy most days, and had a bit of a uh, punk background as well, obviously. Um, as a lot of, I feel like, thrash metal does sometimes. But um, I had an idea of what I was going into. I have listened to Anthrax before. So I had that going for me. I didn't know what I was going to get production-wise, which I think we already hinted on a little bit. Um, but other than that... Uh, I had a good idea that we were going to be banging our heads a little bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brett, what were your expectations coming into this album? I mean, I, I grew up with metalheads around me, and it was mostly the Megadeth, Metallica, Maiden, and thanks to my buddy Mark, a whole lot of guar. And I've even met <laughs> members of Anthrax. Like, Frank Bello talked to me about back injuries and the importance of quality sneakers when I was working for a music store and he was doing a bass clinic, but like of actual music, like, you know, I've, of course I've heard the, some stuff in passing, like I'm familiar with the hits, but I've never, and you know, some stuff while I was putting bicycles together, I would listen to, but like, this is mostly fresh to me. Like this is like, and, and this also of the anthrax that I've listened to in the past, uh, it, it was different than this. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason for that. Well, yeah, I mean, different. yeah. <laughs> Something a little bit different. Uh, um, this album's from 1993. Get a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> and, a, uh, and, and an addiction to the junk. Uh, but yeah. Patrick, how, how different is this? How would you describe this album musically? What would be the themes elements? 
so sometime between the album that preceded this, Persistence of Time, which is a fucking classic, and this album, uh, the original lead singer of Anthrax left, and they replaced it with this guy named John Bush, who sounded fundamentally different. And this wasn't like an ACDC situation where they replaced someone with another guy who can sound exactly like that first person when he wants to. It's kind of a, a different vibe. They went from a guy who was sort of on the more high pitched Bruce Dickinson sort of approach to a metal singer. And this is sort of more angry man, James Hetfieldy, I guess, but not really James Hetfieldy, but more, more aggressive and less operatic, I guess would be a better way to describe it. Uh, and, and you get kind of this weird moment. So by 1993, if you look at the rest of like the big four bands, they're firmly into making awful music. Metallica's, you know, doing load for Megadeth. years. Yeah. Yeah. For Me- years they've been making bad. Yeah. Megadeth had like the, like your couple years past uh, countdown to extinction and all the not so good stuff that followed that. And a lot of people didn't even like that record. Uh, I do, but I'm a weirdo and, and Slayer yeah. is. Slayer is years past the good shit, too. So, like, here you go. You know, hey, we're, we're Anthrax. We get a new lead singer. And we go out and make what I think is one of their better records. Uh, it's it, it doesn't sound exactly like Anthrax, but it sounds exactly like Anthrax, but with a different guy singing. And I just, like, this was one of those albums where there are, like, three or four of my favorite Anthrax songs are on one record. Because I'm a weirdo and I like the John Bush years because I don't have, like nostalgia for the earlier stuff other than persistence of time which is amazing uh drew how would you describe this album musically it's funny like because he said it's anthrax but with a different guy but this guy was with them until what 2005 right Mm -hmm. anthrax is an old 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 band they, I, they're I one that, of the originals. But, right, but like, didn't they... They made albums from... Or their studio discography is... It has almost as many songs between the two singers pre this guy and post this guy. Mm-hmm. Which, like, it's weird to think about how you think about that, but I guess it happens with other bands too. Um, Diamond Dave was in Pantera for, for a while. Then they replaced him with some <laughs> asshole. <laughs> That's, yeah. um, Diamond. Yeah. Yeah. It's also um, Black Sabbath. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, th- and I'm not saying that like just about this band, but like in bands in general, like we see that happening a lot. Happens in metal a lot, actually. Yeah. Like, Dio you know. is. Fan- I, I I forgot all about Dio. That's a, yeah. I, I have ideas for the future. So, so many. <laughs> like this is just an example of all metal bands just trade members. You know, throughout we need forever. To do, we need to do a, a one two punch of like, we'll do Dio and like. Halford? <laughs> yeah. God. I was going to say, we've but done getting Priest. On, no. Getting but, on, yeah. Getting on to the point. Um, Anthrax is one of those bands where the musicianship and stuff, I think, is something that they really don't like. Other bands get in front of people more than they do, and I think that's not really fair. Um, maybe it is that they were changing members uh, here and there quite a bit. Um, when you when you break off your main Wikipedia article and have to have an aside of list of members of your band, you know maybe you go through a lot of them sometimes. Um, but it's something that happens, right? And that sort of gets them not as far forward as I think they deserve to be because the musicianship is really good. Um, this album in particular um, did have this really ominous uh, quality to it. It felt um, really living in like sort of a dark tone and actually going back and looking at like 93 and thinking of what was going on around that time. As far as metal goes, it makes a lot of sense. Um, it it had reverb on the vocals for goddamn days. Um, and the drums. Is, yes. But like, it's, it's one of those things where like Pat was very quick to say, like, don't call this a grunge record. And I did, it didn't even click in my head of where have I heard that reverb style on vocals before? 
And yeah, it Alice 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 and Chains. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's like yeah, almost it, the exact same effect setup and everything. Right. And and that's the thing, right? Is that it's one of those uh, sorts of effects that you sort of hear. Um, there is still like technicality reaching in the solos. There is still a lot of oomph to it. Um, and the way the anthrax can build up and down into like chaos in some songs, I think is really, really brilliant. Yes. Some of the tonal qualities very much point to, Hey, this is an early nineties thing, but at the same time, like there is still enough there that makes this unique and makes this like an anthrax record, the way it mixes like some of, uh, the old, like, like I said, you have the punk influences mixing in, um, very much so on some of these songs. And I think that's, um, very much to its benefit. Um, yeah. all. Yeah. I think, yeah, it, it works really well. I think it's, it's really engaging and, and really fun, uh, in, in, in its metalness, uh, and its metallicity, uh, uh, I think it works well, and I think these are talented dudes that can can really like uh well and wail and 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 play play really well. Um, but yeah, let's talk about some of the key tracks. Uh, Patrick, I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> oh, oh, Brett. <laughs> Wait. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Brett. <laughs> how See, would you, you describe this? Stuff? Ordered everything's fucked up. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Brett, how the- would you describe this album music? Sorry about that. Oh, that's fine. I don't have anything important to say other than uh, I came here expecting a thrash album. Like, you know, like I, I like I, I like me some some kill them all. Uh, I like me some 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 mega death. Uh, when I when, when I listen pop this album in, I'm like, wait a minute. This sounds is this OK? It's that guy, not the other guy. Um, and to thrash it was not. Um but you know, it, it, it's it's a sound of theirs. Like it's 1993, everybody's walking around wearing flannels and like being into the junk, and you know, you can you can hear that in the sound of the production. Like I, Drew was going to what was saying, and I was going to because this is what happens when he goes first. Um, is that uh, I I don't get to steal all of the easy things. But yeah, it sounded like an Allison Chain. It, it sounded like you know, it 1993 was a weird time for heavy metal anyway. But there's definitely a lot going on the the, the tone uh the, the guitar solos are sometimes like uh, they're you know guitar solos but they're not melt your face like yeah it's, there's a lot of chugga chugga and there's a noteworthy wah pedal solo but it is not the like you know two guitars pointed directly at your eyeballs until they bleed uh it's pretty you know it, it's boodle deedle adjacent but it's it's not quite where i was expecting it to be but it's still good like they they did straight up like blues licks and stuff it was kind of crazy they held a note and they bent it and then they pushed on the wah pedal and held that note for you know a beat and a half like uh, you don't hear that a lot in you know thrash metal but uh um also things sort of sounded a little more like the sound of what metal was going to be a lot more lower position on the neck a lot of like chugga 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 stuff but like also the bass work which you know i listened to um a little bit more closely because it's not as in your face in the mix at least when i was listening but like the bass walks around it does stuff it uh it's not just playing the root it doesn't just gallop around either it's not it's not trying to be someone else's uh bass tone um and it's definitely not like any of the other guys in the uh in the big four uh the 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 way i'll I'll get into it when we get into single songs but it was it was pretty great and there's like you know it's it's very thumpy in the drums there's a lot more like bass pedal and uh and tom work the cymbals aren't being hit every five seconds um like like you would expect um and it sort of makes the sound of the album it lets things fit in a way that i i was just kind of surprised at how much they're just a, a low tone to a lot of what was going on which you know fast forward a couple of years and you'll be getting your seven string guitars and being like a chainsaw and tearing people's ass raw yeah yeah you know, try to lift this here, please. uh i mean anthrax has been known to do rap rock 
Yeah. They've um, apologized for that on repeated occasions. But and also, like, you get the there. chance to work with Public Enemy. You work with Public yeah, Enemy. Fun song. Hey, yeah. Th- their their apology, I think, also was amounted to, "Hey, we wanted to make a fun song, and we did. We didn't know that it was going to turn into what it did. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> like, bad. Our uh, bad guys. <clears throat> hey, but it gave us. Re- th- there's some great. Rap beats that are built on some guitars, guitar tones, uh, out there. So ain't nothing wrong with that. They gave us that as well. Uh, but yeah, seventy five percent of the Beastie Boys. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, Patrick, finally, uh, now now that I've reoriented myself, I'm um, over here snorting, snap back in m- myself. Uh, what would be some of the key tracks for you? Uh, start with the opening track, Potter's Field. Uh, this is uh, last of like uh, so Anthrax were like original guitar player or lead guitar player Dan Spitz uh, was like their lead guitar player forever. He was awesome, and then he went and to go make fucking watches. Like how how not metal, but also metal is that? Hey, What's did, the name if of he ever company? gets fucked up, oh, like he Dr. he works Manhattan. for Chopard. He works for like one of the biggies. Uh, they're a big thought, Swiss uh, company. But oh, like he that, literally that quit metal with, uh, and went to college watch kids school. who were tired of paying premium prices. For yes. <laughs> no, no. He makes watches that that uh, cost as much as a used car with with their own movements. Yes. Yeah. yeah he knows uh, how to make making, a watch movement. He's making quartz Casio watches. Yes. With calculators on them. <laughs> but this is uh like it. It, it uh. Not it's just it's good school. guitar stuff. Um. And I really I like John Bush's voice because it, it does kind of have an aggression to it that you did not get with Joey Belladonna, who's a little more shrill and and again, like sort of the high pitched operatic thing, which is fun sometimes, too. Uh, only uh, and I'm going to say something hyperbolic, but it, it's my opinion. This is one of the best sort of thrash metal songs ever. It, it is like I feel like it is the the peak of the one of the like peaks of the genre. In the way, the same way I feel about like uh, Holy Wars by Megadeth, like it's just fucking great. Uh, it's got great guitar tone. The vocals are really, really good on it, and uh, it's like it's not the most complicated technical thing, but it's super, super tight. It's got a cool solo, and like uh, Charlie Benante, the drummer from Anthrax, is kind of I feel like underappreciated amongst his peers, and like he was not, you know, flashy, like like some of the dudes who got paid to play for Megadeth, but like he was really good and he didn't have that whole like Lars Ulrich sucking thing. Uh, you know, he, he could play his instrument and play it well. And he just had a really good feel for it. And then, uh, in terms of like bands getting a little weird, uh, high pro glow, uh, they're just trying some shit and it's kind of cool. It's got a unique kind of rhythm thing going on. And, uh, it's got, got more fun guitar solo and this portion of like, a doubled vocal harmony right before it. That's just fun and cool and not a thing you hear a lot in like a, what is effectively just a thrash metal record. Yeah. Uh, Drew, what would be some of the key tracks for you? Sorry. Now I'm looking at watches that I can't afford. Um, Potter's field. Um, opening the record on a solid 45 seconds of actual goddamn white noise um, is a bold choice. Um, a bold choice. Um, and like some of it like very much feels like what modern metal is doing these days. Um, there's a lot of overdrive. It's chugging. Um, the lyrics are sort of a giant middle finger. Um, and then, like I said before, the reverb on the vocals is intense. Um, so the, it gets your head banging. It's what a first song should do in a metal record. Um, burst. Um, the burst to me feels like the hardcore song. It's like the thing that the guys from the guys in the band that were in so were like, hey, let's bring out a punk rock song. Um, I feel like this was it. Um, it's easy chords that are played super freaking fast for no apparent reason. It's under four minutes. It doesn't ask questions. It just goes. Um, and then cowboy song. Um, it was like super random 
and like super out of left field, but also like super dope. Um, it the composition of it was very strange, but it still had like the re- reverby vocals, the crunchy ass guitar. Um, because it's, it's a Thin Lizzy song, yeah. is it? Yeah, oh, I did not know that. You listen to the the <sighs> extended release of it, but that's a Thin Lizzy cover. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Hence it being weird. Also, yeah. there's a cheap trick cover on there somewhere, yes, too. There I did not know that. I don't listen to a whole lot of Thin Lizzy. Okay. That Okay. That's How are you a bass dope. player and you don't worship at the Temple of Phil Linen? Like, like you're missing he, out. He's in a ska, he, he's he's a ska basis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. Different line Thin Lizzy was not jazz? <laughs> yeah. Also, he young. Yeah. Youngest. Oh, wait. Have I brought SMV yet? Hey, kids, look up <laughs> look up Thin Lizzy. They were pretty yeah. good. Hey, we're going to have a jailbreak library. somewhere in the town. Hey, kids. So don't you be around. Do you like violence? Uh, uh, Brett, what would be some of the key tracks for you? Well, I have it on good authority that James Hetfield says that only is a perfect song. So take that for what you will. Uh, only. Um, I, I remember this song in some form from many years ago. Like, I don't know. Like, this was a song that was around. Um, you know, there's plenty of wah pedal. Uh, and it kind of sounds like an Alice in Chains. Uh, like, the tone and everything. Um, and at the, like, three-minute mark, you get a solo that is very unheavy metal ish but the drums underneath uh, with the simple bent notes, like, you know, having crazy drums underneath, even just holding one note and bending it a bunch while you go, wow, wow, um, is, is still pretty neat. Um, you know, packaged rebellion. Remember back when metal songs or like, uh, like metal albums had, uh, like multiple songs with strange intros, uh, that start with like moody plucking or finger style. Yeah. They got one of those on this album. Um, think like blackened by like yeah, or any number of Metallica was really bad at doing that. Um, High Pro Glow. I'm pretty familiar with this song for some reason. Uh, from back in the the BMX days, I don't know what, but I, I really like the way the bass sounded at the end of the track. It's sort of like it does a gallop, but it does it in a like a stair a staggered way that that worked really well. Uh, Black Lodge, you know inspired by twin peaks that's why it has that really really dumb tremolo sound like somebody <laughs> dug a old fender amp out and used their misnamed vibrato channel um but like it was mixed so in the front that it was kind of distracting and also this song was released as a single like that not really reaching hot banger status but like it definitely is of the time obviously it's and and burst like there was a part in the middle of the song where like an AFI song broke out. Like there were woes <laughs> and all sorts of shit. And then it went away. Yeah. Um, but like if I had been knocked in my uh, across the head and drug out into the woods and somebody threw headphones on me and said, who's this band? And I heard that song. Anthrax would be the last band that I guess. <laughs> um, like it's, it's, it, it, it's kind of a thing. But like there are other things going on in this album. Like they're, you know, not everything's a banger. There, there are a couple stinkers. But uh, like overall, the like, this is this is what you get. It's 1993. It's heavy metal. Everybody wants to make their money by sounding like Seattle. Like it's it's kind of a a dark period for the genre. But like, you know, like Seasons came out a couple of years before this. That people were still rocking. Way of the Warrior had yet to come out with White Zombie soundtrack for the 3DO. <laughs> like. Yeah. It's yeah. it, it's sort of this. It, it, I was kind of happy to come back and and hear these songs now because, man, it was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Because we were all there for it. Oh, I think. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's talk about some of the key tracks. I will say, uh, give a shout out to uh, and the uh, the opening track that opens with uh, is one of the m- m- several songs that samples that. This is a journey into sound, <laughs> sound sample, uh, which yeah. now at re- least recently we know uh, more, uh, more, more specifically, in, uh, or, uh, a tribute to 
uh, the I'm a Fix Wolves hip hop podcast. And it's one of those things where oh. it's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Now I see why. Okay, okay, I get it. It's, it's because it's a big time sample. Uh, yes, okay. and now all they have to do is get George Bush Sr. going, read my lips, no uh, new taxes, and they'll I, have all of it. I do have to say, they probably don't need to play the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's talk about some conclusive thoughts. Uh, let's bring it back around the horn. Uh, Drew, what would be your conclusion on this album as a whole? Um, it's an album. Like I said, the production was in the overall tone is something I don't think I was expecting, but the musicianship is something that I definitely was. Um, it's an album that I had a lot of fun with. Um, and a band that if you think you might like them, you're probably going to enjoy it. If you think you don't like them, you're probably not going to change your mind. Anthrax, that Anthrax ass Anthrax album. Uh, Brett, what would be your conclusion on this album as a whole? I mean, I, it, I, I, I'm not mad at this album. Uh, it's not my thing. Um, I'm glad that now I know it apart from just the other stuff that I've sort of hoovered up in my time. But, uh, like, it, I mean, of the anthrax that I, that I would be listening to, uh, this probably wouldn't be it, but like, I can see why somebody would be attached to it. I just, you know, James Hetfield said there's a perfect song on this album. That guy can't be wrong. <laughs> but like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, what would be your conclusion on this album as a whole? Um, I just think it's fun that like a band can change lead singers and somehow come out with one of their better records, especially following up something like Persistence of Time, which I think is probably more traditionally associated with really good Anthrax albums. I also just think Anthrax was kind of underappreciated uh, compared to Metallica or Megadeth or Slayer. Uh, like there's sometimes like the fourth kid in that thing, and I, I think Slayer it holds the number four position for many. It, it depends on 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 how heavy you like your metal, but uh, or your drugs or your drugs or or your you know Nazi stuff. But um, yeah, <laughs> there, there's yeah. Some, there's yeah. some of that too. Yeah, uh, everyone thought it was a joke, and then no, no, it wasn't. I mean, he's uh, dead. Yeah, the rest of them aren't though. Uh, but it's, I really, I think this is a really fun album of theirs. It, it is, it is sort of the, the end of, of thrash metal being, I think good. I mean, there, there hasn't been much since then that like would qualify as thrash metal and good. So it's, it's fun to see, to see the last sort of, we're really trying here before it all sort of falls apart. Yeah. Um, yeah. That wraps up nicely the thoughts on Anthrax, the band, not the lethal substance. Um, let's get into the main events of the evening. We get to our haiku reviews, where we sum it all up in poetic form, in a fun way. Can you we'll do a little fun little rejoinder, a fun little bit we do at the end of the of the show? Uh, and it's fun. Uh, all right, let's get down to it. Drew, what is your haiku? Assault on the ears. If your neck is not hurting, you are in the wrong. <laughs> uh, Brett, what is your haiku? One of the big four. From a strange time, so it's fine. It shows its age. Uh, my haiku? Cool heavy metal. Filled with plenty of talent. Great for headbanging. Uh, Patrick. Metal health is- will drive you mad. <laughs> uh, well, Patrick, what is your haiku? Singer swap out. Add something fresh to the sound. The last gasps of thrash. Of course. That wraps up our thoughts on Anthrax. Sound of white noise. You can, of course, find the, the album on our Spotify playlist, Play Record Breakers in the Home Game. In fact, it's titled that. Uh, follow along with us. Uh, 
if you have your thoughts, be sure to share them, share them or share them, uh, share them down below, either on the YouTube comments or on the website. Uh, where you're looking, where you're looking at the show notes, let us know, you know, what you thought of the album, how you, you know, what, what sticks out to you, what some of your favorite songs, you know, and if you want to throw in a haiku, that'd be awesome too. You don't have to, but it'd be fun. Uh, but yeah, share with us our thoughts so we can get feedback, talk back and forth, uh, see what other people. What's your favorite Pokemon? Happen. Let us know. Like exactly which Pokemon? I'll we'll tell does, you you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> which Pokemon does this album remind you of? Poplia, yeah. Garbdor. <laughs> uh, but of course, it just you can throw that down there uh, in the comment section. Uh, and on that Spotify playlist will be also will also be uh, next week's record. Uh, I believe that is provided to us by Brett. Brett, what do you got for us next week? Sticking to the same genre of heavy metal, um, I was inspired to bring this uh, this album not long ago. We're going to be listening to Jethro Tull's album Aqualung. Yeah. Aqualung. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Sit on a park bench. <laughs> Sitting on the Buying park little bench. girls with the... <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, going to stop there. Uh, Save it for uh, next uh, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's, let's leave it to that. Uh, but yeah, Jethro Tull. Go ahead and check that out. Uh, have metal flute all everybody. <laughs> uh, call back. Uh, but yeah, you can afford you know, that'll be on our Spotify playlist, you know, to listen to. So, uh, but that's the next week, and this is this week. And you can, of course, find us all over the internet. Patrick is at the Swagger. Brett is at Hibbity Burbert, H I B B I 2 I B I B B A R D. Drew's at Extra Super X. I'm at PD Rave. The show is at 4 Record Breakers. That's the number 4 Record Breakers. Record Breakers Podcast.com. Record Breakers Podcast at gmail.com. If you want to email us, email us your feedback so in the comments. That'd be great too. Uh, Rebelly.net for this and other shows. Uh, you can check out show, the show notes as well. Uh, Rebelly TV on YouTube and other places. You can find us where you find podcasts, you know, like, share, subscribe, do all the things. Until next time, hasta los huevos. Toodaloo.